warm welcome. Uh, you know, this is the like the opening panel for the spectrum, and we're very glad uh, that we could kind of see ourselves together on stage. Thank you uh, so much. So, as the uh, theme goes, uh, we are looking at uh, digital transformation through disruptive tech. So, um, as we can see, a lot of enterprise is reinventing itself. Um, and the digital playbook has varied in different phases in different ways. So I and we were like kind of kind of kind of discussing this a little while ago as well. At some point, it was about whether to go to the cloud or not. And now I think uh, the dynamics of the discussion has changed completely. And in many organizations, um, uh, the boardroom, as they say, has allowed for solid business cases to be present for reinventing tech. So more often than not, and you know this better than me, you are seen as uh, collaborators who actually have to talk to different uh, uh, you know, functional leaders. And I do hear that in many organizations, there is a nice duet going on between uh, different functions, while in some cases, it's not so harmonious. But tech at the front or the back plays its role in kind of helping you formulate those discussions, those powerful discussions, and your stories of how you really look at people, processes, and outcomes together, I think forms a strong case for today's discussion. So on that note, I would kind of want to throw open a question to this panel, and uh, I'll go in no particular sequence, because I think sequences kind of take the energy away from uh, you know, the panel, and I'm happy to see a sort of a slightly gender equitable uh, you know, uh, placement here. So there's Ruma, there's uh, Kamolika, and yours truly here. So we make up for some bit of the panel as well. So let me deflect the first question to Harnath. Harnath, uh, uh, digital transformation, I think, has seen different phases, as I just mentioned a little while ago. So how uh, has this panned out for you, uh, particularly in the last three or four years? I'm aware, you know, and we have spoken in the past as well, that you had an early mover advantage in your space. Uh, which is in the tech and consulting space, and you head the digital in, uh, initiatives across the board, across the lines of business. So lots of interesting stuff which I had heard earlier. So what happened since then? <laughs> sure. Uh, th thanks, Shantri, uh, mm. uh, for having me here, and obviously to start the panel discussion with me. Uh, uh, see, I think if you uh, look back, uh, uh, let's say two years, two years back when before the pandemic, if you had to ask organizations, where are you on your digital transformation journey, everybody would say, we 100%, right? We are there. Only to realize in uh, March 2020 that you're not really sure where you are on the digital transformation. I think digital transformation is more like a journey to, to, my, to my mind, uh, more than a destination. Uh, it's actually, we are, you're always evolving, you're always catching up uh, with the transformation. So I think in our case also, uh, I think we started our transformation journey uh, back in 2015, 16. And since then we've been trying to catch up every time because the technology has been changing the newer, uh, you know, more models of business are evolving, our clients are evolving, we are responding to the newer changes that are coming in the industry. So it's been, it's been a, I would say it's been a catch up, but uh, to, to give you the phased approach or give you the construct in terms of how digital transformation obviously has really worked for us. One, um, I think the whole idea of uh, transformation needs to start from the top, right? I think uh, the very buy-in from the CEO or, or the uh, executive leadership is something which needs to be there. Otherwise, you can't really start the transformation journey. The organization won't really have the energy to take that change, number one. Number two, uh, you know, you have to also have clear targets, saying that what exactly you're trying to transform. In our case, let's say we said we will look at transformation from a particular business uh, or a service line or transform ourselves within as, as a business, right? So uh, the way we run our business, the way we run our processes, but also have clarity in terms of how we want to, uh, you know, uh, measure our success from a transformation perspective. Third, obviously, you can have great targets, great buy, -in, no money, no transformation, right? So securing that funding was the most important aspect. So you have to have the funding that comes in play, uh, and also have a visibility on how you want to spend that money. I think that's the that's the first stage that you cross from a transformation perspective. The second uh, step was. Uh, you can't boil the ocean, right? You just can't say that I'm going to transform everything that is there in the organization. You have to choose lighthouse projects, right? So you say that these are the areas that I uh, pick up. This is where I see a lot of value. These are low-hanging fruits. 
I see better ROI. So you pick up those uh, areas and start working on uh, those projects, right? So to take an example, for us, the lowest hanging fruit was employee experience. The second was the lowest hanging fruit was how do you transform taxation, especially when we are dealing with uh, such a large change from a governance perspective, right? Uh, the country was going through a big change from a taxation perspective. Or the way we were running audits for our clients. Everything is changing and our clients are changing. They are getting more digitized, so I can't go back to them with Excel sheets and uh, PPTs, right? I, I need to be uh, transformed by myself. So there's a third part. So which are the key lighthouse projects that you would look at from a transformation perspective, which will give you the better, uh, you know, uh, better run uh, uh, from, a, from a mileage perspective. Most important element that we had to uh, uh, get into was identify the right team to drive this. You can't have the older team driving the same transforma uh, newer transformations with this older mindset, right? So you had to have the right kind of uh, talent in play and that was the most difficult part. At least last years have been, I would say, uh, tougher, but I, uh, I think that was the important element to get. And also tune the organization to work in a newer ways of, you know, uh, of, of operating. So two years we have seen uh, the hybrid work environment, the digital way of thinking, the digital way of delivery. Uh, if you had to look at the conventional way of delivery of applications, is it the way you do it or you actually start thinking about cloud native applications, right? I think some of those aspects of rethinking the model of delivery, rethinking the way of, uh, you know, um, uh, digital. And, the, and, the, and, and to kind of cut short on my answer, the last part was once we were successful in those areas, we moved on to scaling it up. Right, scaling it up, creating a target operating model which will actually start working. And that's where we started seeing transformation across the board. We were, we, because we were scaling up, we were reusing what we had done, we were not duplicating, we were actually investing in the right place and created an organization which was much more digitally competent and was able to push the agenda much more stronger in comparison to what was in the past. So that's, that's been the phased approach, Shantri, that we have taken. Sure, great. And um, I kind of take off from uh, what you said about employee experience. You know, you found that to be the easiest, lowest hanging fruit to start or rather, you know, augment the digital uh, agenda. So thanks for that, uh, Hanath. I'll move on to uh, uh, Sandeep here. Uh, Sandeep, again, a diametrically different industry from Harnath's right? Um, huge, uh, you know, sort of larger, uh, b for want of a better word, brick and mortar, you know, space. Uh, lots of legacy also maybe which came your way. So what were the specific strategies you looked at uh, and what business cases drove your uh, cloud or your dig digital agenda? If you could just quickly walk us through. Shandri, sure. mm -hmm. I think very good question. See, mm -hmm. again, from our perspective, mm -hmm. I'll divide it into two parts. One is what has been our strategy. And again, I will speak specifically about cloud. Number two is the key learnings which are coming out as we are proceeding towards this journey. See, number one, I think from a strategy perspective, we have a strategy on a very simple 40, 40, 20. What does that mean? 40% of our workloads are on business agnostic apps. What does that mean again? This will be the SAP, the SharePoint of the world. These are the low hanging fruits which you want to quickly move over to cloud. Number two, 40%, the balance 40% is the business applications. There you will have to see, these are some of the specific manufacturing oil and gas applications. You will have to analyze whether you want to move it over to the cloud. These are a complex, uh, complex applications, right? Number three, the 20%, we are very clear we do not want to move to the cloud. These are the plant system based applications which have OT ramification, which have security ramifications, we are very clear we do not want to move to the cloud. So that has been our strategy in terms of the cloud, right? And I think the second part to your question was, how did we identify the use cases? Again, this is very simple, whether you take cloud, whether you take digital, you have to look into the value chain analysis for your industry. You have to break it down, where does digital helps and cloud would be a sub part of that. For us, I would just like to highlight one of the use cases, see I come from Kane Oil and Gas, it's an upstream, upstream oil and gas organization which is basically we do exploration, we dig wells and then we have a pipeline which takes the oil from the wells to the refinery. That's the business which we are in. For us, the key part in the value chain is the exploration which is the seismic data. So basically we get petabytes of data through which we analyze where to drill. 
Sometimes it takes two to three years just to analyze this data. We put in all the data over to cloud in our recent project which we did. It has given us an immense value and again, you need to have very clear KPIs defined. For us, first time to oil, which is basically how much are we crunching the time to have the first time to oil was the key KPI. So again, very briefly, the recommendation is look into the value chain, find out the opportunities, then only proceed. Do not proceed if you do not find a benefit in this. Last part of this, very quickly, what are the learnings coming out? See again, we hear about 20%, 25% ROI as we move to cloud. Be very critical about that. This is what we are learning. See, you will reach a tipping point after a certain time where your cloud spend would exceed your on-premise spend. At that point of time, you need to get relevant tools to optimize the spend. No doubt you will get all the business benefits, but the spend is also very important. So you need to have that strategy in place, how you would optimize the spend going forward. Very, very aptly said. You know, I think that's a universal ask across uh, organizations. What's the spend? And how we really like looking at the value on that spend or how we controlling the spend? The, the options are only two, you know? <laughs> so yeah, thanks for that, Sandeep. I'll move to Ruma now. Ruma, welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us here. So I throw back a variant of the same question. A, uh, what precisely, you see, of course, large conglomerate like uh, Unilever, and I think you're, if I recall right, when we were discussing, you're now spearheading a global role, multiple lines of business, product lines, and uh, you're very passionate about driving transformation, and you have a slightly different take in terms of uh, how you're looking at your digital agenda. So if you could walk us through, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, thanks. <coughs> So I'll just first say <laughs> what my company does. Uh, how many of you use Surf Excel <laughs> for washing your clothes? Raise your hands. How many of you have probably used Lux or Lifebuoy today morning? <laughs> right? Anybody has had ice cream, quality walls? Children, hopefully. Nor soups? Yeah. So that's what we do. Uh, I am part of Unilever. and. Uh, yeah, Indian business is Hindustan Unilever, and now I'm in a global role, so it is a company which is present in 190 countries. So two out of three people, seven billion people in this world, would be using it every day. So our aim is to make sustainable living common place. All of us want to make this a sustainable planet. Now I'll start first by something which was said in the morning, that you know COVID has had a challenge, and I just want to reflect on it, that yes, it has been a challenge, but as digital transformation goes, and as technology making a difference to the world goes, I think it brought to forth the fact that really technology helped run the world during that time. And hence, my first response is, this whole area of digital transformation, quite frankly, has already begun. Whether we realize it or not, the greatest reinvention that was to happen in history in the last two years has happened in front of our eyes. Now for Unilever, for myself and the kind of roles that I do in terms of the journey, I think we are no longer, nobody has been in an analog world, we have all been evolving, right? So whether it is making that bar of soap available in the shop next and the whole chain behind it, from a distributor to a, you know, the supply chain that goes, a massive supply chain, whether it is about the uh, planning behind it, whether it is about the customer experience, whether it is about a digital workbench in R&D. You know, there is no place in a COVID world where scientists would come, the 6,000 scientists, and do research physically. You know, it was all simulations in situ. So my simple response first is I'm very, very proud to be in a, a professional in a time where there is a clear merger between business and technology, right? Now, that is one. Second, in terms of making an impact, there is, um, in our experience, a continuum, right? You started from an era where 80s, you had your point systems that came in place. We went to a world in which we became regional. Uh, so obviously, there was scale in whether they, it was the SAP rollouts, et cetera. I would say that was the mid-2000s era. Then for us, the world became global and functional. So we had large functional transformations. So supply chain in planning or you would have an order to cash transformation about how you can reduce your gross overdues, accounts payable, how you can actually consolidate and create work at scale. You know, and technology plays a role completely in creating 
you know, technologies and systems for that. So from an IT perspective, it meant that you went into what you call 40, 40, 20 things which are business agnostic. Yes, the SAPs of the world, etc. But then you came up with a lot of SaaS-based global solutions which were functional in nature, whether for procurement, whether for R&D, whether for, you know, different functions. We are now in an era where we are saying that how can we, somebody mentioned employee experience. So we are at the next evolution of saying, how can we orient all this work around experiences? So or for various persona, customer, I am part of integrated customer experience now, which will cut through across, you know, right from the way the sales team works to the supply chain team to, uh, to, to, to the finance team in collecting cash. Then the other persona would be a supplier. So, you know, suppliers are also important. Another persona would be employee. So we are really orienting a lot of our technology work around experiences. And yes, we have moved 97% of our estimate to the cloud. To me, to, to me, you know, all these things are opportunities. Various technologies and tools come, and that's about it, right? Uh, landing it for specific business problems and then managing the changes where the journey has been. Great, thanks a ton, uh, Ruma. It kind of resonates your, you know, your kind of your, your comments resonate with us as well. Thanks uh, so much, uh, Nitin. Uh, again, um, you know, uh, a different industry, you know, vis-a-vis -vis, uh, uh, some of us here. So media and uh, a lot of uh, related, you know, tangible spaces around that. So, a, uh, how has your digital agenda evolved in the last three years in specific? What were the business cases in, can you outline a couple of, you know, strong business cases that necessitated uh, your evolving your digital strategies? And did you have to take a balanced stand between uh, looking at your cloud or kind of modernizing legacy applications? So if you could just quickly walk us through. Mm. Sure, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Uh, so what has changed in three years uh, for a media industry? Um, media industry is, accepted or expected to deliver the content wherever you want at whenever you want uh, and in a fashion which is managed and regulated in a way that it does not disrupt your own personal value system. So that is a big shift compared to when we were all growing up with the television era which was a unilateral communication model. So a lot has changed from an expectation point of view and that has led to at least four or five key initiative everybody is doing in the media industry. One is uh, everyone is migrating their workloads which are relevant for business, specifically for consumer experience to cloud so that it can scale better. They can leverage data at scale. Uh, machine learning is no longer a distant concept. It is necessity and uh, requirement for any native digital media business to survive and most importantly complying to the laws and regulation in real time. Uh, we don't have the benefit of applying policies and processes at a retrospective level because when something pops up whether it's entertainment or media news and we broadcast it on our digital platform or television we can't go back and say sorry we did not moderate it well and it has its ramification at a population scale. So for us, it is a necessity and the only choice we have is to migrate things at scale for transformation on cloud. Uh, what's going to matter a lot is how the cloud infrastructure providers keep up the pace with the changing regulations and how can they offer machine learning and AI capabilities in conjunction with the changing regulatory environment in this space. So it's very important that we leverage it and media industry lives and breathes there on a daily basis. Sure, I think that's a relevant point here and I think you will get some of your answers during this panel as well. We'll hold on to that thought. Uh, Vipin, um, very quietly, uh, you know, uh, quietly and quickly to you, you know, you're right beside me and I know I came last to you. My Okay, so uh, because I wanted to break the monotony of sequence. Uh, so uh, my question to you would be A, 
uh, how are you really uh, sort of looking at uh, is is are you able to resonate with whatever is really um, you know sort of uh, uh, being said here i mean some of these things are universal you know and i think it cuts across industries and uh, b uh, what specific challenges did you face which necessitated your digital transformation journey and was cloud an integral part of that thought process and b uh, are you also looking at uh, sort of augmenting your cloud strategies further? If yes, or if no. <laughs> so thanks. Mm. Uh, see, first of all, it's a very uh, experienced panel. There is no reason for me to not resonate with them. Uh, see, cloud over a period of time has evolved. If you look at the perception of people, even the IT side, if I look at 10 years before, it was 50-50, part doubt, Doubt because security of data, cost, these are all challenges. And part yes, ease of use, one single place of putting the whole thing. But I think over the last 10 years, the service providers of the cloud also has matured and so has businesses. Today we really understand what we want and they also understand why we were not putting to the cloud. So that I think has become a triggering point for businesses to adopt the cloud. Now, uh, now if you look at that, why should we adopt cloud or why not? See, uh, generally, if you look at that, all workloads are not meant to be shifted to cloud. Just because it is giving you ease of business, just because it reduces your, uh, your workload at on-prem, that is not the point of shifting to the cloud. There should be a uh, confirmed business case why you want to do. So every digital transformation must start with two things. One, what is the need? What business problem are you solving? Who are the stakeholders? And what is the outcome? What is the timeline and what is the cost? I mean, these are the five, six parameters when you combine together and try to answer. That is where you decide whether cloud is a better strategy or on-prem is a better strategy. I have seen organizations which are taken the plunge to the cloud and as somebody was saying, the cost, the cost has suddenly become so much that the reverse journey has also started. So when do we use cloud or why we should use cloud is when you have unpredictable workloads. There's a humongous business growth which you are not able to force your plan when you are, because technology today you see in IT is evolving like anything. So when you want to evaluate those technologies, you don't create those workloads on-prem. You, you create those workloads on cloud. And one major problem this cloud is solved for all IT guys is DR. I mean, you know, last decade or so we have been debating that when you create your primary site, the investment which goes into that there's a complete use case that, you know, you are going to spend X amount of money in creating all these things, but you're also going to use it. But when you create a DR, you say in principle to the board that a DR is in place, then you need to create a DR as a, as, as a big, uh, as a big uh, setup. And that big setup, when it will be used, we don't know. So this has been a debating point within the industry. How do we cost optimize the investments which you put on DR? Cloud gives you a clear answer on that. Start small, explode big when in need. So, 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 so the basic thing is that, you know, what drives cloud is the need, the, the, the state of business. In my case, if I particularly put that, Uflex is a global organization. And touch wood, the growth is also very fast. We are, exp we are putting up new plants in new geographies. Now, to perceive all that growth in just one year, it may not be uh, quite possible for us. So this is where we believe that, you know, cloud serves as a purpose. And, and, and number two, when you have your workforce, which is spread across geographies, different countries, how do you collaborate? How do you give them a seamless user experience? This is where clouds comes in the picture. So I think cloud gives us a lot of visibility in terms of bringing people together on common platforms and unifying IT across multiple countries. That is where we see cloud as a journey. Sure, and uh, I think, uh, you know, your uh, commentary necessitates that I call uh, Kamolika into the discussion now. Thanks, Vipin. So I think uh, Nitin and uh, Vipin brought in two parts. They said right now uh, CSPs, all, you know, essentially should be looking at, uh, you know, enriching the cloud experience by bringing in automation, more automation. And while uh, Vipin said, not everything needs to go to the cloud and a lot of organizations are look looking at the reverse because sure. they realize it may not be really working. So two questions to you, your response to some of the comments here. Sure. 
and b what are the i mean they stated out some of the roadblocks so what are the key roadblocks to digital transformation cloud transformation and catalyzing uh, you know digital transformation and b how does google cloud really help customers to scale and achieve efficiency so if you could really address these lots of questions thrown <laughs> at your basket right. but if you could quickly walk us through no 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 thank <laughs> thank you for that and it was really fascinating to hear everybody's perspectives on this because i think lot of nuggets of wisdom you know in in what we just heard so i'll try to keep the two questions uh, you know a little separate because i think they address different things and also try and uh, speak to some of the points that were raised now when it comes to cloud transformation or digital transformation as the broader umbrella you know i am a firm believer in the fact that every organization chooses their own path there is no boilerplate approach that can be applied or should be applied uh, because e each organization even if you compare across uh, you know entities in the same industry their paths are different their realities are different what they're trying to do is different right so reflecting and choosing the right path is absolutely absolutely important right having said that you know as google uh, we get a great ringside view on organizations who are trying to transform i mean i won't say just ringside view because we are also involved but when you look at the view that we get as google across you know marketing transformation or customer transformation uh, you know uh, technological transformation uh, you know we actually consider ourselves privileged to be in a position that we are to be able to help across this entire chain and take you know some of those visions forward right so i think three things that to me stand as the hallmark of successful cloud transformation and hopefully that addresses some of the points that were raised is that you know don't do cloud transformation just for its own sake you know taking applications to the cloud while that's of course the first step is just the starting point right and even there to use your judgment on what you want to take on cloud and when i think that's the very very nuanced decision and like i said it's rooted in every organization's reality right but if you actually look at the whole scope of what transformation can do that is the table stakes that's the starting point because the question now to ask and i think you know we're in august company where almost everybody would have experimented this would have put the first or even the second wave of applications onto cloud the question is what can you do with it then right and that's where i think uh, you know uh, we heard it mentioned a couple of times the vision of digital transformation of what you're actually trying to achieve really comes into play and that really helps to set the stage for what you want to do once you move your applications to cloud or you have a hybrid setup are you looking to deliver to the customer experience are you looking to deliver to the speed of execution uh, you know are you just looking to manage your cost footprint more efficiently but a broader vision to us always differentiates uh, you know the organizations that are really looking to change things around to organizations who are just trying to manage the footprint right so i think that that's uh, to me is is very important the second thing is that all cloud transformation uh, you know to us successful uh, cloud transformations manage it as a portfolio of projects right so any innovation like any innovation program always make sure that your digital transformation is not hinged on just one lighthouse initiative that's driving everything else of course there are lighthouse initiatives we do know that but at the end of the day the fact is that digital transformations the borders are constantly shifting not only because of realities in your own organization but realities which are external to us and the ability of any cloud slash digital transformation to adapt and evolve as the as time goes by to add new projects to maybe stop some that are not working and to have that mindset that we will learn i think that's that's supremely important so having that portfolio that represents your businesses uh, you know ventures in different directions different strategic elements that you're exploring i think is super important right and the third aspect and this is something that i think i've learned the most about looking at how uh, you know some of our leading organizations in india operate is really the element of speed right and i want to spend a minute on this because traditionally you know it decision making has been uh, you know sort of formed around the on premise world where you decide something on an it project it's absolutely locked in right there's a license lock in there are contract lock ins and all of that that ensures that or that needed a decision making model that went through months of decision making to come to a particular uh, conclusion about an it project we don't exist in that world anymore cloud gives us the luxury of planning our transformations you know in a much more adaptive way and much faster right so if you can set up a data lake and get it running in 2 or 3 months time do you really need to take 6 months to decide on what that data lake is going to be right and that's really my fundamental learning as well and i see a lot of organizations adopting this the speed of execution must now reflect a cloud world as opposed to an on premise world where one had to be really wary that you weren't locking your organization into a long term 
uh, you know, construct, right? So I think some of these things to me are the hallmarks of a successful, you know, cloud transformation program. And I'll very briefly address your second question as well, which is about what does what does Google do, which is so unique, right? And I'm sure you know uh, we have a lot of partners who work in these transformational programs. In fact, any transformation these days can't really be delivered by one entity or one technology partner. It's always an ecosystem of people that come together to deliver a successful outcome for an organization. However, what makes Google unique in this is the, the perspective that we bring, right? Now, when you talk about digital transformation, if I can ask you to reflect, where did this actually originate from? It originated from the fact that consumer technologies actually went ahead and innovated faster than the technologies under the enterprise umbrella, right? And so those expectations from consumer technology, the kind of experiences that we were getting on apps, the kind of experiences that we were getting on all these consumer platforms, started driving then change within the enterprises to say, we need to be more flexible, we need to respond to new customer expectations, we need to really realign ourselves to give a superior experience, right? And who better than you know, an organization that understands both sides of this coin than Google? Because Google is the one that really drove a lot of those changes in the consumer experience and consumer technology. Our understanding of that, our management of that on a daily basis really exposed us to problems at scale that I think very few people had actually solved on the planet before, right? Now on the cloud side, we actually bring you the technology that has solved some of these problems. And I don't mean just infrastructure, but everything else that comes with it. Everything else that is the distillation of Google's learnings from this foray into the consumer space. So that is what makes our approach unique, is because we bring the consumer perspective and the technology and the enterprise perspective together. And that is a very unique Google way of solving the problems that you have at hand that I think is not replicated by anyone. And increasingly, we are also being challenged by our customers to say, why don't you come together to me as Google and solve my problems? Not just as infrastructure, but maybe for payments, maybe for customer experience, maybe for you know, YouTube and influencer outreach. All of those things make a very, very rich mix that I think is absolutely the right ingredients that any organization needs to digitally transform. So I would say that's what makes us unique, Shantiri. Hand it back to you. Sure. Thanks, uh, Kamalika. Thanks, uh, Tan, for the crisp insights. Uh, and I think we kind of, you took it one by one uh, pretty well. Uh, I would want to invite Avik into the discussion. So, Avik, uh, you've heard, uh, you know, sort of the panel speak. So, what is your experience with customer uh, conversations being A? And B, uh, you know, as we know, customer-oriented digital solutions naturally drive revenue, they enhance business growth, and in turn, it also enhances user uh, stakeholder experience. So what would you ideally be recommending as a digital solution playbook and some of your customer conversation insights as well? A couple of use cases. Mm -hmm. Sure, thank you, happy to. Um, in fact, uh, thanks to the panel for such an engaging discussion. Um, so I work on the other side of the equation as part of Aerospike, uh, helping businesses transform themselves. Um, and we've been doing this with enterprises and startups alike in the Indian market for several years now. Now the question about digital transformation is not so much whether it has to, whether companies have to transform. It's about how quickly can it be done while keeping the lights on and with as little cost as is possible. I mean, if you go to run a huge bill while transforming your business, it's probably not a good idea. So that is the first thing to look at, right? And while you, while you do that, you've got to look at the ecosystem that's in play. If you look at India, we're in a very unique position today where the regulator and the administration has set up these ecosystems in play, unless and until you jump onto the bandwagon, regardless of how big or small you are, you're probably not going to be relevant. A simple example is a UPI story. You look at the UPI story, the haves and have nots in the industry, in the payment space, people who have made it, have all made it with the UPI platform in play. How quickly have they been able to build that while also leveraging the ecosystem and giving a great cu customer experience to people who use the platform? A payment story is just an example, right? But you look at what's happening in the ONDC space um, or in the digital currency space that's coming up or even ABBA in the healthcare space, every one of them is going to be a data intensive application that's going to touch every one of our lives, individually as well as, as part of organizations. Now, as organizations which are building platforms, you've got to look at if you're going to build something sustainable over a period of time, do I have an ecosystem and a technology play there that will that'll help me? We have seen organizations that start off with a, a particular technology play, and over a period of time, they realize that they don't have a technology uh, platform out there that can help them uh, scale very quickly. That's not a good idea. I mean, if you look at, uh, we talked about customer experience, for example, right? If you've got to give the best experience to your consumers, they better have the same experience when you start off 
and, and it should grow to the same experience as more and more users get on, on, on board. So I think that becomes very important. You've got to make the right choices. One of the panelists said about um, active site and a DR site and how, um, you know, how it is very critical to make use of the multiple data centers that exist or the, or the uh, ACs that exist and so on in the cloud, uh, cloud space, right? Um, we, we, what we have seen is uh, gone are the days when people can look at a data center and obviously you want to have a DR site, but you also got to look at how do I make best use of every data center that's there. And what Aerospike has done for organizations like Airtel and in the banking space with organizations like HDFC and IDFC and so on is, we have worked with them to find out how we can best utilize every single data center that they have. Building active, active sites. So gone are the days when we're saying, okay, we're gonna have our data center go down and then I switch over. Yes, that's, that's one part of it, but also how can I make use of every single site? It could be a, a DC site or a DR site. How do I make, make best use of it? If you have a technology that can enable that in a very low um, you know, um, uh, quantum of time or, or latency that we call, then that's a great win there. And also, like I was saying, the cost of the overall solution has to be low. In today's world, especially if you have something which is very expensive, that's not even a starter on the table. So what we've done to a lot of organizations is to find those, you know, th those, those pressure points in the infrastructure where they can better utilize that with the existing infrastructure that they have with an aerospike out there to, to, to modernize their infrastructure. And, and, and obviously, from a scale perspective, we are very excited about the Indian market and the stories that we are hearing here as well, because it's, it's, it's a market built for scale and built for a kind of a case where you've got to understand the customer better and provide those solutions for them. So one of the things that we talk about very often is customer experience while understanding the, the customer, right? So when you open your app, your mobile app, for example, you've got to get something which is relevant to you. If I'm going to see something which is not even relevant to what I'm trying to browse, then I'm going to very quickly disengage. So as enterprises and startups alike, what we provide, what we show to a user has to be customized to that user. You can customize only when you understand the user. And to be able to understand the user based on what he or she has done recently as well historically, you gotta have access to that data very quickly. And that's what is changing today. Look at the Airtel app, for example, or even some of the other you know, banking customers that I talked about. They have access to this data in real time. And that's one of the things that we have, that we have done is to get them access to this data so that they can get better insights and provide the right decisions or take the right decisions as customers you know, evolve in the journey with the, with the particular platform. So to your question, uh, digital transformation is here to stay. We got to leverage the ecosystem. We got to make sure that we find those pressure points, cost pressure points that we can better, better, better take a handle of. Um, and also while, while also looking at what would happen if my business were to grow. How do I scale very rapidly uh, with the right technology stack? So. Sure. So, um, you know, kind of got some interesting on the other side uh, insights from both Kamolika and uh, from Avik. So, uh, I think, well, well, let me take a quick look at the, okay, we are, we're still in good time. We have a couple of minutes, but that gives us uh, some time to sort of think. So, if I were to take a dipstick, and I'm just throwing this question open to the panel, if I were to call something a disruptive tech, uh, what would be those three top uh, of the recall, uh, you know, parts of disruptive tech? That, how would you define it out? What would be those three top of the recall? Ruma, do you want to just take a go? Uh -huh. So. <coughs> I think Kamalika put it very nicely. I think the amalgamation of enterprise scale with consumer experience kind of technologies is, is, is really making the difference, right? And there are so many, right? Enterprise scale is all about cloud, scalable modular platforms on one end and, and so on. And on the front end part of it is all the technologies around web, around machine learning, around data, around analytics. And the merger of these two and doing it in a very scalable and modular form, I think is the difference. Uh, so disruption, as a word that you said, to me disruption has to start with being very clear about what is the problem we are trying to solve. And that I think is key. We have to start with the business problem. And then any tech can be disruptive. Absolutely. Uh, Harnath, quickly. <laughs> sure. So I think uh, uh, like any teenager, once uh, they get a new bike, right, they get too excited about uh, the bike and they just want to do everything with that in terms of speed, wheelie, whatever. I think uh, it's with typical uh, most of the enterprise as well. Or let's say we're trying to try out something new. So we get too excited with new technologies, not really realizing what could potentially be the downsides or upsides of the platform or the technology that we're uh, thinking of. So <laughs> from a uh, pure from a uh, disruption or disruptive technologies perspective, I think we have seen enough of AI in the past. Um, 
we did uh, hear about you know machine learning is not a distant uh, concept i think it's so we'll see more of ai um, uh, which is going to be part of uh, you know every application that we're thinking of be it consumer facing applications or the enterprises uh, metaverse while obviously has uh, has a very weak start or had a weak start but we will start seeing uh, you know a very i would say positive uptake because it's in the very initial That's stages That's interesting yeah and the third uh, tech which is uh, uh, i think cloud obviously is the building block for some of these technologies i think uh, uh, autonomous technologies is something which uh, is going to kind of start taking uh, uh, you know taking a lift primarily supported with the with the um, understanding that organizations will also have to start looking at sustainability as one of the key basic agenda so whichever technology whichever platform you're choosing is sustainability is being part of the uh, core fundamental of that particular technology i think that's something which is going to be working out in future excellent um, nitin uh, anything to be disruptive it has to have two characteristics so one is it has to be bold it can't be another incremental uh, try half and fail uh, mm-hmm. half hearted effort <laughs> and second is it has to be done at speed nothing is disruptive if it happens over decades or years or others and classic examples are aadhar upi and lot many other things are happening we could have done the same thing over 30 years doesn't make any difference to anyone and for it has to have an impact it has to have three characteristics one is simplicity that's a basic thing which everybody misses when they want to disruption second thing it should scale scale at a size of population multiple times and third is secured so if you can have three <laughs> characteristic it makes sense for it to work but if you are not bold enough and you don't have speed everything is nice but it will not have a disruption absolutely i completely agree with you some brass tech comments here sandeep shantri if you ask me about one technology what personally excites me is metaverse <laughs> you know we started this journey just two months back <laughs> and the use cases which we are realizing they are still not in the market there is so much of nft blockchains etc but when you break it down and then you combine with technologies like digital twin plus metaverse the kind of uh, the kind of business use cases which we have started getting is amazing so that personally excites me still takes 2 or 3 years to mature but there's something to watch out for yeah absolutely early days but very exciting uh, vipin we just have time for one uh so i think more than technology i think each particular type of business has to really understand what is disrupting it and that is the technology which is meant for it for some it may be ai for some it is ml it for some it is something else but you know each individual business must ensure that the disruption must lead to one of the efficiency increases or productivity increases or a new business model getting created when you go ahead of business with disruption that is where disruption serves the purpose best absolutely absolutely and i think you uh, one man's meat can also be another man's poison absolutely. depending on the industry absolutely. Absolutely. great thank you so much i like to the diverse mix of industries one in this panel and to the diverse mix of technology and people and conceptual ideas that you threw in here so thanks a ton i think our times up i think all our eyes were there somewhere along the way thank you for keeping up time it was great talking to each of you vipin sandeep nitin harnath ruma kamolika and avik thanks so much for your time and thanks for being part of this any questions i think you are going to be around for some time offline uh, the audiences can benefit from your insights further and talk to you and thanks uh, with that we sign off 